my grandkids i'm fixing to do part three and hopefully this will be the last part of joshua and now uh, we're going to start with chapter 16 and they're still you know talking about the lands that belong to all the tribes of israel so now we're on uh ephraim and west manessa okay and the lot fell to the children of joseph from the jordan by jericho to the waters of jericho on the east to the wilderness that goes up from jericho to the mountains to bethel see i'm not going to read all that but what it's talking about here is that ephraim and west manessa the land of ephraim remember that's joseph's sons <clears throat> the youngest son is ephraim so the children of joseph in verse four so the children of joseph and manessa and ephraim took their inheritance manessa was the oldest and ephraim was the youngest so it starts talking about what they're going to receive what is their part and and all this other kind of stuff and then it talks in chapter 17 the other half tribe of manessa the west side there was also a lot for the tribe of manessa for he was the firstborn of joseph like we said he's the oldest right and then it talks about how um the firstborn of manessa who is also the father of gilead because he was a man of war therefore he was given gilead and bashan and there was a lot for the rest of the children of manessa according to their families and remember they also talk about the daughters remember uh manessa's uh in the family of manessa uh joseph's tribe right there was they talk about the daughters that were born only to i believe it was makir and he only had daughters he didn't have no sons remember we talked about that we talked about that in the um other book so they're still talking about them in joshua because jo remember they they it says here in um verse four the lord commanded moses to give us an inheritance among our brothers therefore according to the commandment of the lord he gave them an inheritance among their father's brothers ten chairs fell to manessa besides the land of gilead and bashan because the daughters of manessa received an inheritance among his sons because he had ten daughters you know he didn't have no sons all right and then here in verse 14 there was more land for ephraim and manessa given and this is why it says here then the children of joseph spoke to joshua saying why have you given us only one lot and one share to inherit since we are a great people because they're talking about there were two right manessa and ephraim and then so they were like going joshua said tells them so joshua answered them if you are a great people then go up to the forest country and clear a place for yourself there in the land of the parasites and the giants since the mountains of ephraim are too confined for you like you know go up there that's free for your taking go do this go do that right so there on verse 17 and joshua spoke to the house of joseph to ephraim and manasseh saying you are a great people and have great power you should not have only one lot but the mountain country should be yours you know they got to do their part they want it they got to go do their part to get it so now chapter 18 the title to that is the remainder of the land is divided um now the whole congregation verse one of the children of israel assembled together at shiloh and set up the tabernacle of meeting there remember the tabernacle the one that the the israelites had been uh, carrying through the desert for 38 years one, you know once um moses taught them how to set everything up and he blessed everything and all that and the levites knew their parts and their duties they had to do and they were the ones responsible for breaking it down putting it together carrying it and doing all that kind of stuff well this is what they're talking about the tabernacle and it's going to be set up there at shiloh all right and this is when they get into the promised land after so many years and now the the remainder of the land is divided and it says here that and the land was subdued before them but there remain among the children of israel seven tribes wow which had not received yet received their inheritance so there was still seven tribes so this is what they were going to do they were going to start dividing it so they start throwing lots it says here um then joshua said to the children of israel listen what he says how long will you neglect to go and possess the land which the lord god of your fathers has given you Pick out from among you three men for each tribe, and I will send them, and they shall rise and go to the land, survey it according to their inheritance, and come back to me, and they shall divide it into seven parts. Judah shall remain in their territory on the south, and the house of Joseph shall remain in their territory on the north. You shall therefore survey the land in the seven parts, and bring the survey here to me, that I may cast lots for you here before the Lord your God. But the Levites have no part among you, for the priesthood of the Lord is their inheritance. And Gad, Reuben, and half the tribe of Manasseh have received their inheritance, beyond the jordan on the east which moses the servant of the lord gave them so then the, the men went and they did as he told them to do and they came back then joshua cast the lots for them in shiloh before the lord and there joshua divided the land to the children of israel according to their divisions so the land of benjamin is the first lot 
and they start telling you what they're going to get. So Benjamin got Beto on the north side. It tells you what he got and what's on the border, you know, is on the north side. What is the border on the south side? Um, what is the border on, on you know, the, where the southern boundary is and then the east side? I mean, you have to read this to find out exactly what everybody's going to be getting, right? But it's it's right there. It talks about the cities of the tribe of the children of Benjamin. And um, just got to read that, guys. I'm not going to name all the cities for you. But they did get certain cities. And one of the cities I liked for some reason I highlighted it. And that was that Bethel. They, they ended up being in Bethel. They get Bethel. So um, they ended up with 12 cities. They'd have uh, with their villages. And then 14 cities with their villages. You just got to read it, okay? So then chapter 19. Simon inherits with Judah. Okay, it says here, the second law came out for Simon, for the tribe of the children of Simeon, or Simon, according to their families, and their, inherit their inheritance was within the inheritance of the children of Judah. They had in their inheritance Beersheba, and then it starts naming all their cities, okay? And then, the inheritance of the children of Simon was included in the chair of the children of Judah. Listen to this in, chap in verse 9 of chapter 19. It says, for the chair of the children of Judah was too much for them. Therefore, the children of Simeon and their inheritance within the inheritance of that people. It's because Judah was so big, the, the land that they got was a lot for them. So the Lord made them share it with their brother, Simeon. Okay. So now we get to the third lot, which is the land of Zubalan. Right. So to the tribe of Zubalan. And this is talking about what they're going to be receiving. And it tells you how many cities they get and um, what they are and their names and, and all that kind of interesting stuff. You know, if you want to go ahead and write that down or whatever so then we also get to the fourth lot which is the land of Issachar and um it tells you what cities he gets he gets um 16 cities uh Zibelin got 12 cities Issachar is going to get 16 cities and then we get to the fifth lot which is the land of Asher to the tribe of Asher and it tells you exactly what he's going to get and he got a total of 22 cities and then it talks about the sixth lot which is the land of Naphtali and Naphtali uh, talks about where, you know, everything, all the cities where they're at and everything. And how many cities he got was 19 cities. And then it gets to the land of Dan, which was the seventh lot. It says the seventh lot came out for the tribe of the children of Dan. And it says um, in verse 47, And the border of the children of Dan went beyond these, because the children of Dan went up to fight against Leshem, and took it, and they struck it with the edge of the sword, took possession of it, and dwelt in it. And they call Leshem Dan after the name of, the, of Dan, their father. This is the inheritance of the tribe of the children of Dan. So they had a little bit more because they went and fought for it, right? So um, it talks about them there. And then Joshua's inheritance. Joshua was going to get an inheritance. Remember Joshua? Okay, he's the one that led them. He's the one that was fighting with them. He's the one that did everything that Moses um, blessed him because he wasn't able to go to the promised land. So here's God, you know, now he's going to give him his inheritance. And it says, verse 49, when they had made an end of dividing the land as an inheritance according to their borders, the children of Israel gave an inheritance among them to Joshua, the son of Nun. According to the word of the Lord, they gave him the city which he asked for, which was Timnah, Sarah, in the mountains of Ephraim. Oh, that scared me. Sorry, guys, that was your grandpa. <laughs> he came in, I, I was so into this that I... I didn't even see him coming in through the front, and I had the window open, and he came in through the door. <laughs> it kind of scared me. But anyway, here's Joshua receiving his inheritance exactly from the city he wanted, and in, in the mountains of Ephraim, because he comes from the tribe of Ephraim, okay? One of Joseph's sons. And he built the city and dwelt in it, Joseph's younger son, right? And these were the inheritance which Eliza, the priest, of, the priest, Joshua, the son of Nun, and the heads of the fathers of the tribes of the children of Israel, divided as an inheritance by lot, in Shiloh before the Lord at the door of the tabernacle of meeting so they made an end of dividing the country and I wrote wow Israel was its own country finally awesome right I think the Lord was so kind and loving the way he you know he gave to Joshua and everything and then it, it says um in chapter 20 is the cities of refuge and remember we talked about that in the other books um with Moses how he also had divided and they were going to have the cities of refuge uh, of a refuge and that and what the city of refuge is going to be used for and everything like that so um that's what they're going to be discussing here in chapter 20 and then in chapter 21 is the cities of the levites so the cities of the levites they start listing all the cities that they're going to get and i love the way god did this because god is awesome because it says um verse 21 it says then the heads of the father's house 
houses of the Levites came near to Elijah the priest to Joshua the son of Nun and to the heads of the fathers houses of the tribe of the children of Israel and they spoke to them at Shiloh in the land of Canaan saying the Lord commanded through Moses to give us cities to dwell in with their common land for our livestock so the children of Israel gave to the Levites from their inheritance at the commandment of the Lord these cities and their common lands and the Levites inherited uh, from for Aaron you know like there was Aaron's they got 13 cities and they got 13 cities from Judah, Simeon, and Benjamin. And they list the cities that they get from them. And then uh, the Kohath, the Kohathites, right? Because remember, um, Levi had three sons, okay? But it, it goes to four, it gets divided four ways. Because, you know, um, uh, Aaron and his family, they were the high priests. So they, get, they got their own thing there, all right? So they get their own cities. And it's in Judah, Simeon, and Benjamin that give them theirs. So... It's just, I mean, you want to know what cities they got, you got to write them down. And I did that, but I want y'all to do this so y'all can see because y'all be going, wow, you know. You're going to just be like, wow, that's the way I was whenever I started reading the Word of God and started putting them together and everything. My grandkids, seriously, it's awesome to read the Word of God. It's awesome to read the Bible. I enjoy it so much, and that's why I'm doing this for y'all, okay? So I'm just giving you the summaries, though. Now, the Levites, the Kohath, from Kohath, you know, the son of Kohath, uh, they got 10 cities from Ephraim, Dan, and Manasseh, all right? Half of Manasseh. And then the Levites, the Gershonites, you know, from Gershon, the son, they got 13 cities from Issachar, Asher, and Naphtali, all right? And um, then Merari, Levi's son Merari, they got 12 cities from Reuben, Gad, and Zebulun. Yeah, just, it's like awesome, right? So all 12 children ended up giving the Levites cities. So it's, God, the way he does everything, he makes sure everyone does their part in this family, in this great nation that he chose, right? That's the way he expects it to be. That's how I look at it in, in, in our daily life, you know, how we can apply it to us. We're supposed to be there for our families. We're supposed to be helping one another. We're supposed to be looking out for one another and everything like that, you know. So um, I just thought this was awesome, and that was in Joshua chapter 21, and then um, it talks about how God doesn't forget, you know, he was spared with everybody, the re the cities of refuge, the cities for the, the Levites, and how everybody got their land and everything like that. And so verse 43 says, So the Lord gave to Israel all the land of which he had sworn to give to their fathers, and they took possession of it and dwelt in it. The Lord gave them rest all around according to all that he had sworn to their fathers, and not a man of all their enemies stood against them. The Lord delivered all their enemies into their hand, not a word failed of any good thing which the Lord has spoken to the house of Israel all came to pass yes awesome so now we're in chapter 22 and these are the eastern tribes you remember that they were on the other side of the Jordan now they're able to return to their lands so this talks about how they um, they were fighting you know how long they fought seven years it says right here in verse 3 it says, you have not left your brethren these many days up to this day, but have kept the charge of the commandment of the Lord your God. And now the Lord your God has given rest to your brethren as he promised them. Now, therefore, return and go to your tents and to the land of your possession, which Moses, the servant of the Lord, gave you on the other side of the Jordan. But take care for he to do the commandment and the law, which Moses, the servant of the Lord, commanded you to love the Lord your God, to walk in all his ways, to keep his commandments to hold fast to him and to serve him with all your heart and with all your soul. So Joshua blessed them and sent them away, and they went to their tents. They, and it also says here that <clears throat> in verse 8, and <clears throat> return with much riches to your tents, with very much livestock, with silver, with gold, with bronze, with iron, and with very much clothing. Divide the spoil of your enemies with your brethren. <clears throat> They had fought, and, and they got their spoil every time that they fought against, uh, you know, someone. And they got something, they saved it. And when they went back, they took it back, and they divided it with everybody back home. Isn't that something? Oh, my gosh. You just got to read this. Um, that's in chapter 22. <clears throat> and then, when they went back, they made an altar by the Jordan. The, the other tribes, they did this, and they caused some issue. It caused some issue between... Um, uh, between the families, the tribes, the 12 tribes, right? Because remember, two and a half were going on the other side, but they they, they did an altar, and you want to know why they did that, how they did it and all that, but it did cause problems with the 10 and a half that were still on this side. 
nine and a half they were still on on the other side that they had just left helping get all the land and um <clears throat> so somebody sees that they did that they go running back and they tell them hey you know what the two and a half tribes did over there they built this this altar and and you know it's going to cause problems you know it started they wanted to go to war they wanted to go fight them and and um because they're like what are they doing they're going to cause us to to lose our land and you know we just got it and we just got to the promised land so what happens is joshua says hold on a minute you know um he says we're not going to do that let's find out what's going on first so once they go over there and they ask them why did they do that you know they get the they this time they investigated they they didn't just like go all crazy and just start doing things on their own they they said we're gonna go speak to them and everything and they did and they went to go find out what they did and they just said look um we're gonna be coming on this other side of the jordan and we don't want our children to forget you know um about the lord but we also don't want y'all to forget that we are a part of your family right and so they did this for a reason there's a reason why they did this and you want to find out what it is you got to read chapter 22 because i'm not going to tell you everything all right i want you to, i'm giving you a summary and i'm not telling you the whole story i want you to go into chapter 22 of joshua so you can find out exactly what they did what was the outcome it wasn't bad but hey it almost turned out bad all right so go ahead and read that now chapter 23 is joshua's farewell address uh, let's read verse one now it came to pass a long time after the lord had given rest to israel from all their enemies around about that Joshua was old, advanced in age, and Joshua called for all Israel, for their elders, for their heads, for their judges, and for their officers, and said to them, I am old, advanced in age. You have seen all that the Lord your God has done to all these nations because of you, for the Lord your God is he who has fought for you. See, I have divided to you by lot these nations that remain to be an inheritance for your tribes. Meaning that they're still there, you still got to go get them, but they are already divided. <clears throat> So then he says here and verse 5 and the Lord your God will expel them from before you and drive them out of your sight so you should possess their land as the Lord your God promised you. <clears throat> Therefore, Sorry guys that's your grandpa Juanillo's phone ringtone whatever you want to call it. Um, okay so um, let me go ahead and finish here. It says where Joshua is telling them Therefore, be very courageous to keep and to do all that is written in the book of the law of Moses, lest you turn aside from it to the right hand or to the left, and lest you go among these nations, these who remain among you. You shall not make mention of their name, of their gods, nor cause anyone to swear by them. You shall not serve them, nor bow down to them, but you shall hold fast to the Lord your God, as you have done to this day. For the Lord has driven out from before you great and strong nations, but against you to this day. Okay, so what he's saying here, he's just kind of like doing what Moses did when he was leaving, you know. He was reminding them of the commandments and everything. And um, he says, remember that, that they were not all removed. He was also telling them, these nations were not all removed. They still remain among you. And he's telling them, so don't go start marrying them. Don't start letting them uh, marry your daughters and you don't marry their daughters and so on. And he says, um, uh, verse 14, behold this day I'm going the way of all the earth and you know in all your heart and in all your soul that not one thing has failed of all the good things which the lord your god spoke concerning you all have come to pass for you not one word of them has failed therefore it shall come to pass that as all the good things have come upon you which the lord your god promised you so lo so the lord will bring upon you all the harmful things too so if you do not or if you're not obedient he's saying even the bad stuff can happen too just like the good stuff has come so can the bad so, you know, that's also, like I said, it's an example for us. Now, chapter 24, the covenant at Shechem. Then Joshua gathered all the tribes of Israel to Shechem and called for the elders of Israel for their, for their heads, for their judges, and for their officers. And they presented themselves before God. And Joshua said to all the, the people, Thus says the Lord God of Israel, Your fathers, including Terah, the father of Abraham, and the father of Nahor, dwelt on the other side of the river in old times. And they served other gods. Then I took your father Abraham from the other side of the river, led him through all the land of Canaan, and multiplied his descendants, and gave him Isaac. To Isaac I gave Jacob and Esau. To Esau I gave the mountains of Seir to possess, but Jacob and his children were down to Egypt. Also I sent Moses and Aaron, and I plagued Egypt according to what I did among them. Afterward I brought you out. Then I brought your fathers out of Egypt, and you came to the sea, and the Egyptians persuade, pursued your fathers with chariots and horsemen to the Red Sea. So they cried out to the Lord, and he put darkness between you and the Egyptians brought the sea upon them and covered them and your eyes saw what I did in Egypt and so on he goes telling them how they are where they are right right there and then it says here in verse 14 this is um, 
something that I love that Joshua says. He says, Now therefore fear the Lord, serve him in sincerity and in truth, and put away the gods which your father served on the other side of the river and in Egypt. Serve the Lord. And if it seems evil to you to serve the Lord, choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve. He says, Whether the gods which your father served, they were on the other side of the river, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And that's something that you hear, that you see on people's walls, you know, on plaques and everything. That says Joshua 24, verse 15. Okay. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. So the people answered and said, Far be it from us that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. For the Lord our God is he who brought us and our fathers up out of the land of Egypt. So they're like agreeing to all this. And it says, You have chosen the Lord. He tells them right here in verse 22. So Joshua said to the people, You are witnesses against yourselves that you have chosen the Lord for yourselves to serve him. And they say, We are witnesses. Right? And then he also says here in verse 27, And Joshua said to all the people, Behold, this stone shall be a witness to us, for, for it has heard all the words of the Lord which he spoke to us. It shall therefore be a witness to you, lest you deny your God. So a stone is a witness. God is awesome how he says, even because even Jesus said that, right? Whenever he was going through, you know, um, when he was going into the temple and the people were putting the palms, the you know, when we're talking about um, the last holy week, right? When his triumphal entrance into Jerusalem on, on a Sunday, on Palm Sunday, right? He, they told the, it was the Pharisees saying, hey, you need to tell them to be quiet, not to be saying, you know, calling you the son of God and all this, you know, what they were saying um, about him and everything. And he says, look, even if I tell them to be quiet, those rocks, those stones right there were crying out. Wow, powerful. So we have to be like, our God is mighty, right? So now that we're getting to the last part of chapter 24 and also the book of Joshua. And it's, it's, um, the title is Death of Joshua and Eliza. Eliza is the priest, right? Now it came to pass after these things that Joshua the son of Nun, the servant of the Lord, died being 110 years old. 110 years old. Moses was 120. He was 110 years old. And they buried him within the border of his inheritance at Timnah, Sarah, which is in the mountains of Ephraim. Where, you know, that's what he inherited on the north side of Mount Gaish. Israel served the Lord all the days of Joshua. So the whole time that Joshua lived, they served and all the days of the elders who outlived Joshua, because Caleb also, you know, was still living, and some of the priests, they were also, that grew up and all that. But he says, who had known all the works of the Lord, which he had done for Israel. Um, the bones of Joseph, which the children, remember the bones? Way, way back in, um, in the book of Exodus, whenever Moses left, he um, took the bones of Joseph. Remember Joseph said, you know, in, Gen in uh, Genesis, he made them promise that they would take his bones because he knew God was going to get him out of there. He says, when when God comes back for us, remember to take my bones and bury me over there with my family. Right? And so here, listen, this is like how many hundred years later? Guys, think about this, right? It says here, the bones of Joseph, which the children of Israel had brought up out of Egypt, they buried at Shechem in the plot of ground which Jacob had bought from the sons of Hamor, the father of Shechem, for 100 pieces of silver and which had become an inheritance of the children of Joseph. That's where that tomb is at. In the land of the children of Joseph. They got that. They were they inherited that. Isn't that awesome? Isn't you see how God works? God's plan. Way, way back then in Genesis, already being he already knew this. He already knew that's the way it was gonna be. And it says 33, and Eliza, the son of Aaron, died. They buried him in the hill belonging to Phineas, his son. Which was given to him in the mountains of Ephraim. In Joseph's son, Ephraim, the youngest one's land. Because they got a piece of that land. Aaron's children, if you read where they say that you can go back and you can see where they talked about the cities that was given to the Levites. And you can see that. And I'm just like, how much your love, I, I wrote down on here, wow, Lord, you are awesome. How much you love your people. Your chosen people. He did all this, you know, it's just like beautiful and that's the end of the book of Joshua And I'll start with the new book Judges the next book, which is you know, the seventh book and we'll start on that book Please my grandkids take the time to read all these chapters through So you can learn about the Lord's 
ways and how he loves and how he has mercy but also how he deals with us and everything like a parent like parents do and sometimes your parents make you mad because they make you deal with consequences of your behavior you know and you you don't like it you wish that they had more mercy on you and this and that right but guys please read this follow and just thank you for if you are following me and you are listening to me thank you so much just let me say a prayer on this dear father god please i ask in jesus name that you just continue to watch over my grandkids my children lord god i pray that you open their eyes and their hearts to this book to the word of god to your bible lord god the whole from beginning to end lord god and that they will start speaking and that you will open up their hearts so they can also have it written on their hearts lord god i just want to give you all thanks and glory for giving me this opportunity to be able to do this lord god i just feel so humble every time that i do these with my grandkids and my children in jesus name i give you thanks and glory amen